All right, uh, down in the finishing room now, I've got the table all spread out in the finishing room here. I was able to get it all set up. All the leaves are propped up. Now this table joins together with um, small tongues and grooves. And there's brass forks that hold the table together and fit into these brass fittings. And the magic number is 12 feet 8 inches. Now I've been uh, trying to figure out what to do with this finish. It's an old brushed on varnish. It has been refinished. It's not the original finish. Uh, it's been kind of poorly applied. Uh, a lot of brush marks. This one's got some shiny spots. This one leaf has a lot of drips. I don't know what they were doing here. This one leaf is all drips. It just looks hideous. Now I was doing a test spot right here. Uh, I think I'm going to do a wet sanding on the entire surface. I'm going to cut back the finish to try to level it out. Now that's one leaf with all the drips. I don't know how this is going to work. I whether I can cut back all these drips and level them out. And as I was cleaning, I noticed the water was uh, kind of pooling on the top. That's an indication of some type of contamination in the wood or the uh, finish. So this uh, may prove to be a problem later. So I'm going to use uh, naphtha and some uh, wet dry paper around a uh, sanding sponge. Uh, this is very similar to what I did on the last video. Uh, repairing the scratches in the tabletop. I'm cutting back to finish. This time I'm going to be uh, much more aggressive. The edge of the table has some beading on the edge, so I'm going to take some steel wool with some naphtha and clean out those grooves. There's still some dirt in those grooves. Make sure they're good and clean. And you see the dirt. And along the rule joint as well, I'm going to scrub that with some steel wool and naphtha. Now I'm going to wipe it down with alcohol to remove all the haze. Now the next step, I was trying to figure out exactly how to uh, go over top of the old finish. Uh, I was contemplating several different options and I decided to uh, try to seal it with some shellac using the uh, seal coat. So I'm going to brush on two coats of the seal coat. Uh, this is just a white shellac. It comes pre-mixed in a can. So I'm attempting to uh, create a barrier coat between the old finish and the new finish. And I'm going to see what this looks like after I apply a couple coats of this uh, seal coat. Alright, I uh, let that shellac dry over the weekend. I uh, let it harden up good and then um, taking a look at it now to try and decide the uh, next steps. And unfortunately, uh, this is going to have to be stripped. Uh, when I was cutting back the finish, uh, I didn't realize it, but I was cutting back through different layers of finish on this uh, table. 
and it didn't, didn't show up until I put the shellac on it and even two coats of shellac it's not going to hide that and a lot of orange peeling that means there's some contamination in the wood uh, that's not going to let the uh, finish lay flat And I did a little spot here with some sandpaper to see if I could uh, level that out, but you can still see those layers of finish, those little spots on this one table especially. Uh, this middle table uh, isn't too bad. It doesn't have as many problems as the uh, two end, end tables do. But this kind of weird, odd looking stain showed up. After I put the shellac on it, that wasn't visible before. But the rest of this table isn't too bad. It could probably work with this. If the uh, two end tables were uh, like this. Um, on this end table, uh, there's some extreme orange peeling. And I tried a little sanding to see if I could uh, flatten that out, but that's not going to work. That orange peeling is going to keep coming through. So unfortunately, I think the uh, only solution here is to uh, just uh, strip the whole top down. Do all three sections. Get it back to bare wood and then start over. Now I'm going to finish masking off the base. I did mask off parts before. Now I'm going to get the rest of the legs masked off. Now I'm going to run some masking tape around the edge. I'm going to come in about a quarter inch and lay some masking tape down. This will prevent the uh, stripper and lacquer thinner from dripping down along the edge. Now I'm going to stick a piece of cardboard in the rule joint. I'm going to pinch it in the rule joint to keep any liquid from dripping down into the rule joint. Now I'm going to take a coarse sanding sponge. could use coarse sandpaper as well. And scuff up the surface so the stripper can penetrate. Now I'm going to start applying the stripper and this is the citrus strip. Uh, it works very well on the clear finishes and it only takes a couple of hours. Now after about three hours it's ready to scrape and I'm going to use my cabinet scraper acting sort of like a squeegee. I'm just going to scrape the finish right off. I'm going to scrape it down a couple of times and I'm cleaning the uh, scraper off against the inside of the garbage can. Then I'm going to start scrubbing it with the lacquer thinner. I'm going to end up scrubbing it about three times. Wiping it off with the paper towels in between each scrubbing. Then one final wipe with some clean lacquer thinner. Now after I'm done uh, all the uh, stripping, I'm going to take the tape off. That kept all the drips from going down the edge. Take the piece of cardboard out. Clean up anything that got down in the roll joint. I'm going to take the cabinet scraper and go along the edge and remove that little bit of finish, that about a quarter inch that was underneath the masking tape. I'm 
Okay, after finishing up with the 120 grit, I went ahead and wet it down to raise the grain. And I'm seeing some dark spots, uh, some dark areas. So what I'm going to do is do an ammonia treatment. That's going to darken up the mahogany. I'm just going to dilute some ammonia. I don't want to go full strength or the uh, wood will turn almost black. Okay, after the first treatment, I wasn't quite uh, satisfied with how dark it got. So I did a second treatment, just a little bit stronger. And I like the results. Now I'm going to do all the uh, final sanding. I'm going to start with 150 grit and work my way up to 220 grit, uh, which is something I usually don't do is go all the way to 220 grit. But in this case, I'm going to be uh, using a stain on the top. And I want to control the color of the stain. So sanding up to 220 will help me control the color. Okay, after cleaning up the finishing room, getting all the dust out of the room, now I'm going to do a final uh, wipe down with some alcohol and getting ready for the stain. Okay, now I'm getting ready to stain the top. I want to darken it up so it matches the base and also matches a set of chairs that go with this table. And this is a batch of stain that I mixed for a set of chairs that goes with this table. I did a restain on a set of chairs. And this is Minwax Red Mahogany with some ebony added into it. So it made for a really nice dark, rich red mahogany color. And I think it'll make it uh, the same color as the base. And it'll also match those chairs. Okay, on the two end tables, uh, we're seeing this fish eyeing or pooling up of the stain, much like the uh, water did at the beginning when I was cleaning. Uh, that may present some more problems as we uh, get into the final finishing.